Now go ahead and completely ignore this forwarding chest I failed to click and then had to go back to town to empty out my inventory. We're not going to worry about that debacle. We need to talk about the Blight Necromancer, how ridiculously powerful it is, both great for density clearing, speed farming, as well as being able to absolutely melt bosses. It basically runs itself and all you got to do is just keep moving in the direction of the loot and the build will do it for you. I want to talk about how ridiculously excited I am about this build, because I will be completely honest here. While I've always considered Blight to be right on par with Sever, sometimes doing a little bit better, sometimes doing a little bit worse, and ultimately adopting a lot of what the Blight playstyle is into the Infinimus Necromancer, I've always had a bit of a blind spot for just how powerful of a build this is, until I started trying out some pretty wacky stuff here in Season 3, and I'll let you know I'm using an aspect I've literally never used before for the purposes of doing damage, not just utility, but literally ramping our damage. But the one thing that I was afraid about with this build is that, of course, it would do amazing density clearing. It's a ramping damage over time build. Being able to stack corpse explosion in blights as well as lucky hit is par for the course as far as darkness skills are concerned. And where they always fall short is against single targets and bosses. Let's just go ahead and watch this clip from my most recent stream where I said, hey, let's just go try it out real quick against an old favorite by the name of Echo of Lilith. Oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, where'd your health go? Oh no, Willith. Willith, where'd your health go? But I think that the hype, the thumbnail, that video title is all completely warranted. Blight is just on another level. It is incredibly fun to play, rewarding, as well as not requiring the best gear in the game to actually get on its feet and get started. But as you acquire some of the more powerful pieces, is able to absolutely obliterate content as it stands right now. Now, just like every video, I'm going to have a build planner down below where I'm going to show you how I'm currently running the build. That's going to look a little bit different from the video itself because we're looking at an ideal version in the planner versus what I currently have in the game in this video. And then on top of that, I will obviously be updating the Blight Corpse Explosion Necromancer build guide on max roll with my findings, because I think there's a lot of really exciting stuff here. But go ahead and use any of the timestamps down below to hop around to the specific part that you want to be looking at yourself. I'm going to be trying to make my videos a little bit more succinct, not necessarily going over every single stat, but feel free to pause and look at each individual gear piece as you want if you prefer the video format or just go ahead and use the D4 planner. Again, it's linked down below. It'll be there in the comments as well pinned. I hope that that helps you out. But first, let's go ahead and talk about what really inspired me to try out something new on the Blight Necromancer, and it was the inclusion of a single aspect that I don't see getting nearly enough love for this purpose. Plunging Darkness is an oldie but a goodie. It makes it so that your Bone Prison, which was severely buffed in Season 3, will now cast Blight for you. And then that, in combination with the Void, says that your Bone prison will now pull in monsters, leave them in a giant pile of blight, which can trigger lucky hit chance, apply your shadow blight ticks, get blighted up more quickly. It's also going to apply vulnerable to those targets. And if you're using it the way that I am, it's going to also reduce all of your cooldowns. Now you can absolutely use it to generate essence instead if you have worse gear or if you're a bit earlier on in your own progression through the game. But what Plunging Darkness offers is a wildly powerful tool for vastly increasing your damage output, like what we saw against the Echo of Lilith clip. Because very few aspects in this game say take your skill and add on an additional 125% base damage to it. This thing multiplies your blight damage by 2.25. And since we are already an incredibly powerful darkness build that's going to be reducing all of your cooldowns very quickly through the use of Abhorrent Decrepify, but along with Bone Prison also reducing your cooldowns means that Plunging Darkness can be proactively used for damage ramping even faster than just spamming Blight itself or Corpse Explosion. Now what's cool about it is this ends up being your bossing swap. You just literally change this focus with this aspect on it over Lidless Wall and you go from density clearing to boss killing without changing anything else. What it also means is that we get to use Bone Prison with Void Pull, meaning we don't have to use Corpse Tendrils. 
And while I personally like this for the speed farming build, literally swapping this over to Bone Prison can be used as a complete replacement and also is the thing that's going to wildly increase your boss killing speed while keeping every other part of the build completely functional and you don't need to change anything else about it. Let's go ahead and just start off with the skill tree and then we can work through the rest of it and it'll make the aspects that we choose and the unique items that we choose make a lot more sense. And let me just go ahead and give a shout out to Goblin. First off, they put out great content. I really recommend it, but I am just going to straight up lift one of their video editing tricks because I think it makes for a much more enjoyable viewing experience. So let me know if you prefer this approach to me sharing the skill tree or if you prefer seeing my ugly mug while I talk. So what we're looking at here is the base skill tree with the swap for speed farming versus the swap for killing a boss. And I'll just highlight that when we get to that point in the skill tree. We're not using any of our basic skill generators. We're going to be maxing out Blight along with its ability to apply 15% damage boost. Obviously, that is significantly better than the immobilize option at this point. Maxing out Imperfectly Balanced for damage, maxing out Hued Flesh for being able to generate as many corpses as possible. We're still using Blood Mist along with the ability to generate corpses just as a great engaging tool so that our Ring of the Sacrilegious Soul can proactively cast Corpse Tendrils for us. And then if we are on the bossing variant, we would move the three points from Corpse Tendrils up here into Bone Prison with its ability to apply Vulnerable and then its ability to reduce cooldown. Maxing out Corpse Explosion here with the Blighted Corpse Explosion option is going to be the best for bossing and stacking on single target damage. But if you're really enjoying the flavor of the month Bone Spear with Black River casting Corpse Explosion for you, you can actually swap this over to Plague Corpse Explosion for speed farming in open areas like the Helltide and any open world events, or if you're running Nightmare Dungeons where you're already stacking on a huge amount of damage. Maxing out Grim Harvest as the only tool that generates essence on the build at all, Blight has always been fantastic at being able to manage essence without having to use any resource aspects, which opens up another slot either for a unique item or for an offensive aspect. The Crepify with that or Decrepify for being able to reduce cooldown, amplify damage for another damage modifier. We aren't currently using Death's Embrace, but you can absolutely slot in some points here if you really want to. Again, with the speed farming variant, using Corpse Tendrils as well as its ability to apply Vulnerable, that's going to be a really important tool for being able to stack on damage as you run by. And then you'll notice in the Shadow Passives, I'm not really picking up Crippling Darkness. At this point, I just don't think it's good. Abhorrent to Crepify already applies stun, Void is already going to pull monsters, and Corpse Tendrils also already applies a stun as well. Back in the day where you needed to stagger a boss before you could start doing effective damage on them, Crippling Darkness served a purpose, but at this point I don't think that's really worth it. Obviously maxing out Gloom and then maxing out Terror. Now again, here Terror isn't going to apply until you have a boss staggered, so you can actually rip points out of this and put them into Reaper's Pursuit for even more mobility to get through a Nightmare Dungeon more quickly, but this is absolutely going to help us out when we're just killing elites along the way. Standalone, Memento Mori, maxing out Bone Storm, and then obviously picking up Shadow Blight rounds out the build. So again, just very quickly, if you wouldn't mind commenting down below, did you enjoy seeing that gameplay along with the skill tree so it made it a bit more engaging, you kind of had something to be looking at while it's happening, or do you really like how awkwardly I stare into the camera and how inoften I actually blink? I promise I'll get it looked at eventually, but that's why I need these glasses on to stop my eyes from absolutely drying out. Enough about me, let's talk about the gear here. But again, thank you very much for commenting down below, it'll help me to be able to make better videos in the future. Now I know the character that you're looking at might be a little bit daunting because I have not one, but two uber unique on this build as well as a unique ring which is absolutely trash and I'll talk about that in a quick second and a lidless wall and a black river you might go well I don't have that gear Mac what the hell am I supposed to do well don't worry fam I got you covered there swapping out to phenomenal options here will give us a better idea of what we need on the build for it to be successful as a bare minimum and then we could talk about how the uber uniques help it out but any armor with survivability stats and then most importantly lucky hit chance when you have barrier and then cooldown reduction are pivotal to be able to make this build function at a really high level before you have any of the uber unique options and I like to run either juggernaut or disobedience you can mix and match I've been spending a lot more time with juggernaut just because it's kind of like you put this on and now you don't have to worry about total armor rolls on the rest of your gear and instead you can look at a piece of gear like this where I have intelligence and darkness skill damage and while I do have a total armor roll here with the addition of Juggernaut, I can basically swap that out for another damage reduction stat and then just have a super huge damage boost from pieces of gear where you normally had to stack for survivability affixes. But Disobedience and or Juggernaut in combination with Shielding Storm is going to make you effectively unkillable from everything that would deal physical damage and then just capping out your res with a single roll on your boots or with three gems and then a couple nodes in your Paragon are going to make you effectively unkillable across all different damage types. For the gloves, you'll notice 
notice again I'm stacking on an additional damage source here from intelligence because we don't need crit chance we don't crit with anything other than shadow blight procs and since we're not scaling that damage proactively we don't worry about it so attack speed lucky hit chance and then ranks to blight if you are having essence issues you can also use lucky hit chance resource here but then you'll notice that we already have access to ultimate shadow this aspect somewhere else in our build. If you're not running any of the uniques that are on the build, you actually have a ton of slots to be able to put on additional damage here. So conceited, decay, accelerating for even more attack speed to stack things more quickly. The options are nearly endless, but again, the planner will have what I think are the best combination of aspects. So don't worry about trying to write all these down while you're watching the vid. For the pants here, you'll notice that we're going for even more damage, more intelligence, maximum life, DR, and then ranks to corpse explosion to further push that damage. And in fact, on top of that, I'm really interested in testing around with the concept of actually adding on ranks to bone prison, because the lower we can get that cooldown, the more often we can use Plunging Darkness to cast a 2.25 times as strong Blight effect, as opposed to having to wait and spam normal Blight effects. So I would not be surprised if that's what I end up swapping over to. Again, if you're using Juggernaut, that very specifically allows you to open up affix slots to not need to run total armor and that's where we're able to sneak in a lot more damage to the build. For the boots, movement speed, essence cost reduction is really pivotal here if you don't want to use any essence generation tools on the build itself. One res just to be able to max out your res if you don't have a starless guys and then even more intelligence and the reason why we're stacking on so much intelligence not only does it give us res so that we're less beholden to our paragon nodes not only does it just increase the base skill damage but this is also going to scale our ability to effectively crit with the wither node, but we'll talk about that in a quick minute. Just understand that intelligence is incredibly, incredibly valuable on this build, more so than many others. Then you do need to have the void somewhere here on the build. And again, if you're not using a Shaco, the legendary helmet, you can actually put the void onto your helmet slot and instead use Ghostwalker for mobility. For the amulet, ideally you want movement speed, cooldown reduction, essence cost reduction, and then gloom ranks. If you have a total armor rank here, that means you can afford to put more damage elsewhere. You can obviously go with a damage roll here, but I definitely think that either damage reduction, cooldown reduction, or essence cost reduction are the strongest possible stats that you can slot in here. And then obviously, since Blighted is our biggest damage multiplier, here's where we're going to put it. I definitely think if we're going to talk about a single unique ring that is required on the build, Sacrilegious Soul is absolutely that one. It automating our damage output from Corpse Explosion allows you to actually have that run and gun play style that's so much more represented on something like a blood surge or bone spirit build and it is just sick to be able to put that onto blight and have it actually function well you notice that mine is pretty trash while i have a perfect roll on lucky hit chance and i do have the three ranks to skills the maximum life is a near min roll and i have a 1.6 second detonation for my skills here meaning that my ring of sacrilegious soul is unironically 60 percent less effective than it should be just to give you an idea of the relative strength of the content that you were looking at, how quickly we're getting through it with something that could literally be 60% faster. For your other ring, we are looking for lucky hit chance. Most typically, I'm also looking for maximum life since that's so much stronger this season. But then after that, we want any damage stats that are relevant to our build. Vulnerable has really good uptime here. Damage to shadowed targets is also really nice. Damage to close, since technically we are just in the midst of combat the entirety of the time. But even just putting on shadow or darkness damage here would be a great option for the offhand if you are using one instead of lidless or for the boss killing swap here we want lucky hit chance lucky hit chance cooldown reduction and then there are a couple different stats that are kind of nice raw intelligence always a great option damage reduction against shadowed targets is also very good and then here you'll notice that we have essence cost reduction which i'm definitely not angry at and again helps to further make it so that you never have to rely on a resource generation tool even if you do not have any of the uber uniques at your disposal i never feel like i've run out of essence for the wand intelligence all stats and then vulnerable damage and then another relevant damage type here again damage to close damage to shadow affected targets you'll notice that i've crit damage on this wand and that's doing absolutely nothing for our build this is just a replacement that i have instead of black river from my sever build but then when we talk about the strongest options on the build and again in reference to lidless wall for speed farming obviously shaco is a absolute powerhouse you can't be overstated how valuable this is ring of the starless guys took any possible issues you might have with essence generation and just completely ignores them i don't care that it has crit chance and critical strike damage here on the skill itself the lucky hit chance is massive the core skill damage is nice but just spending resource whether it's through decrepify or blight just makes it so that we have a 40 percent damage multiplier and our spells cost 40 percent less essence 
that's insane. On top of that, the double all resistance roll on the ring makes it so that you can slot in additional armor from a skull if you're not using Juggernaut and are instead using Disobedience, or if you're using a Shaco and you're wanting to beef up your armor in a different way. Then obviously Black River is just so much more powerful in darkness builds than it is on other builds because all of the stats on it are relevant to what we're trying to do in our primary source of damage dealing, and then being able to add on another incredibly powerful stacking damage over time effect from the five times effective multiplier on Corpse Explosion. Since we are a darkness build, we have so many overlapping lucky hit instances that we're producing corpses at ridiculous rates. We're able to go into like pure gas mode and go from kind of just stacking on some damage to instant melt very quickly. For the Book of the Dead, we're obviously going to be sacrificing our Reapers for damage here. I just realized that I've had the wrong Skeleton Mage sacrifice here, so that's actually kind of funny. We were completely missing out an additional 15% damage multiplier with our vulnerable damage, so like, I don't know how that happened, but that's just sick. We're literally 15% stronger than I thought we were a second ago. And now here you have a couple different options. I'm currently using Blood Golem just for more survivability because another multiplier on top of everything else, it's actually pretty rad. If I were to take this off, you'll notice that we dropped down about 2000 life, which means we would also lose about 2000 barrier. So that's like pretty cool, but you could definitely go with Bone Golem sacrifice here to get that additional increased attack speed, just to be able to stack all your effects even more quickly. For the Seneschal, I am messing around with a couple different things. Uh, my chat actually, let me on to the fact that bushwhack and arcing work together which is something i never really thought of and the cool part about bushwhack is that pseudo works like the initiative tuning stone that says that your construct will teleport to a target since bushwhack makes them teleport to all the different targets that they hit and i find that's actually helping the Seneschal to stay with me more often and to be able to apply its effects more often. Meaning that, especially while speed farming, I kind of don't need to worry about corpse tendrils or bone prison since breaking is going to be handling the application of vulnerable for me. And then we're actually using dust support as well. Dust support is going to make it so that that shadow damage over time that they apply actually works for your blighted and shadow blight procs. So it's able to very quickly stack the blighted effect and get that additional damage bonus, especially when it drops, you basically have it almost immediately. And then on top of that, Dusk is just phenomenal for survivability as a whole, since it just says they have a 15% chance to just not attack instead of successfully attacking. That's huge. If you're not using Bushwhack, you can actually just swap this over to Tempest and leave on Arcing in these two as well. If you are having issues with Essence, you could just throw on Resource as opposed to Breaking or Dust Support. And I'm kind of coming around to Bushwhack. I think it might be better. I'll have to do more in-depth testing. And then for the other one, this is just kind of tried and true. Flash of Adrenaline for the massive damage boost, tactical and duration to make it last for longer and to be able to apply it more quickly, and then safeguard for the damage reduction here. For the Paragon board, and another disclaimer, again, this is going to look different in the planner than what I currently have, because this is what I thought of in the moment, and I might find some optimizations here but Sacrificial in the first board. I was also getting reports that Sacrificial does not work because you have a Seneschal. It absolutely does. I tested it over 300 damage instances run with and without, and I showed the appropriate 10% increase in damage. Do not believe your tool tips. They're not gonna show you the appropriate damage numbers as always. Sacrificial in the main board for the big boost as well as armor and damage here, up into the Wither node, and then here's why intelligence is so important. Stacking as much intelligence as possible is going to make it so that Wither is going to make our chance to effectively crit with damage over time as high as possible. We're up to a 22% chance here with an additional 118% damage modifier. That's nearly 220% of the base damage that you would expect to get about 20% of the time. So you cut that down by a fifth. And what you end up with is basically a 44% overall increase in our damage from a single node here. It's actually kind of ridiculous how powerful it is. We are building into Abyssal on this board. Hear me out here. Abyssal gives us another 1.1 times damage multiplier, which is phenomenal. And then on top of that, it does give us 21% additive damage, at least at rank 15. And what that basically means is that while it's not as powerful as some of the other additive damage sources that you can have, we are running six glyphs and we do need a really good one to slot into this board. And having it be a minimum dex investment makes it very efficient to be able to path through the Paragon system to be able to get that bonus. Building over into Scent of Death with a Again, another minimum investment to exploit is going to get us a decent amount of additive damage, but that additional 10% damage multiplier whenever we're successfully able to stack a ton of damage instances. And again, we have max corpse explosions and blights going all time. We have this up 100% of the time that we're playing the game. 
If you don't have Starless Skies, a single rare note here for Shadow Resilience allows you to get even more maximum life and then efficiently pass through the board without feeling like you're wasting a bunch of points. Building over into Bloodbath to be able to pick up Exhumation. Exhumation with a full investment here from Intelligence is going to add on a ton of corpse skill damage for our corpse explosion. And then it also gives us Fortify as well, which isn't super impactful, but it's nice considering we have permanent uptime on Barrier to just have another 10% damage reduction, which I'm definitely not going to say no to. In Flesh Eater, this is where we're putting Scourge for the maximum shadow damage over time boost. You could mix this in with the Darkness Glyph. They're effectively interchangeable, except that the most shadow damage over time that you can put onto your build, the more that you're going to scale your Shadow Blight damage, which while we're not critting and it's not super impactful, is just kind of nice to add on as an additional little damage brush that we get for completely free. And then lastly, building into Bone Graft, here's where we're going to be putting Darkness, again, with a full investment as far as we can with our points. You'll notice that we're missing, I think, 10 total intelligence here, which isn't the end of the world. You could pull it out of the rest of your Paragon if you want to get over to there. But the really important thing here is that, again, if you do not have Starless Skies, being able to build down into the Erudite Cluster for the additional all resistance so you can cap out more easily. And then while we are building up into Shape of Bone here, the Bone Skill damage doesn't really matter. It helps with Bone Storm a little bit, but it's much more important that for three points, we're able to get 10 intelligence, which is more than we can get pathing any other way. And basically, that's it. Blight's just sick. It does amazing density clearing, it speed farms with the best of them, and then also just shreks bosses into the ground, and that's something that you don't typically get on the Necro build. While you very often will see amazing builds that can like one-shot Doriel and stuff, it requires you to basically swap everything that you're doing with your gear, reprioritizing for pure crit, hitting a bunch of different cooldowns, and then going, boop, done, I've done it. Whereas this build is going to swap out a single aspect over a lidless wall, and then move points from corpse tendrils to bone prison. Bada bing, bada boom, you're killing Echo of Lilith in seconds. But just on top of that, it's really cool to have a build that works completely fine with just about zero unique items other than the Ring of Sacrilegious Soul. But as you acquire these additional pieces of power, are able to slot in a ton of them, which is just really, really rewarding and kind of relieving. I get asked all of the time, Mac, I just got a Shaco, what do I do with it? I just got Ring of Starless Skies, what do I do with it? I finally have my Lidless Wall, I finally have my Black River, what do I do with this ring? And it's just kind of cool that this build says, hey, did you find a cool item? It works on this build, go ahead and toss it on, here's a little bit of a change you might want to do, and you're just doing more damage, you're just faster, you're just stronger, you just have better survivability. That's awesome. But again, let me know down in the comments if you wouldn't mind, if you like the difference in editing. Again, shoutouts to Goblin. I just straight up lifted it from it. I was watching one of their videos and I just loved it so much. It just felt so much more engaging. And I felt like there was a lot less dead air and dead space where people are normally just like, all right, yeah, sure, we get it. I have a D4 planner. At least in this way, you can get the full explanation and not feel like I'm dragging it on. If you haven't already and you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. It would help me out a ton. I'm just trying to like really match the growth that we had in our last year and catapult into this year. I have a ton of really, really cool things that are coming down the pipeline that I can't necessarily talk about. Maybe you'll see them before you see this video. But just know that every single person who clicks that button is going a really long way to be able to make this kind of wild dream that I have of being a content creator a legit reality. And I appreciate everybody who's been willing to do it so far. Thank you. But as always, I hope that this video helped you out. I'm so excited to be able to share it with you all. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.